Hello friends, this is a preliminary release for the upcoming release of New Electromagnetism version 5. Um, these releases basically get out of the way, uh, little derivations and supporting things we need to get out of the way before we can actually release uh, the New Electromagnetism stuff. And what we're going to do today um, is we're going to show applications of Vortrix Algebra and derivations using Vortrix Algebra, derivations that will be used in the final derivation of the new electromagnetism V5 models. And today we're going to be doing the derivation of our dot, the magnitude of a vector r derivative of the magnitude of a vector r. Now let me throw down some things that are going to be needed later in this derivation. The vector r is defined as the position of a target particle minus the position of a source particle, where the source particle is emitting the field that the target particle is reacting to. What this field is doesn't really matter to us right now. Okay, and that we have the derivative of r is equal to the derivative up here, which is the velocity of the target minus the velocity of the source. Now, some of you are saying, hey, whoa, why don't we just take the magnitude of this and that would solve that? Well, there's a problem here because what I'm showing you here is the derivative with respect to time of the magnitude of r. Okay, taking the magnitude of this would be the magnitude of the derivative of r with respect to time. Okay, see in one case the derivative is in the magnitudes inside the derivative, on the other one the magnitudes outside the derivative. Now you say, well, what difference does that make? Well, you see, this is all the landmines going ahead with the derivation. Because there's a lot of things that you can step on as far as landmines. And I've gone through lots of these derivations and I've stepped on a lot of these landmines. So I'm giving you the benefit of getting through the minefield here without stepping on the landmines. Okay, and so let me show you the differences. Most of the time we're talking about particles that orbit about each other like this. And so most of the time the, the radius from source to target, the radial distance, okay, that means radial distance, not radius, like the radius of a circle, okay, doesn't change. But because this is, these are going around with velocity, at the next instant in time, this particle is going to be here, and this particle is going to be here, and R is now pointing that way. And so if I take these, you know, the, the, the initial R, and I put the next R arrow to arrow, that's going to be my derivative of R. So this is R at T, and this is R, at, I'm sorry, this is uh, at T naught, and this is R at T naught plus delta T. Okay, and then this would be, well, the delta R, actually, using the proper terminology. So, here the length of R doesn't change. So, in this particular situation, the derivative of the magnitude is equal to zero. In this case, because the distance between the particles does not change. But because R is spinning, there is a derivative component along the direction of its spin. And so, this is not equal to this. This is not zero. Okay, and so that's the difference between the derivative of the magnitude and the magnitude of the derivative. We're going after the derivative of the magnitude. This has caused me so many problems, and we're going to get into more landmines as we go on. So let me just... Now, I'll start here. Um, so, because this is a scalar, we're going to use conventional calculus. We don't have to use the Vortrix algebra calculus, but let me show you one more little thing here which is going to blow your mind. So what I'm going to show you now is one of the other landmines, and that is the magnitude of R is equal to the position of the target minus the position of the source squared square root. This can be replaced by, because position of the target is R, is r squared square root. And you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, hold on. If you're taking the square and the square root, how can, why isn't that just r? 
And that's one of the other landmines here is the in vortex algebra, when you square a vector by itself, that creates a scalar matrix with the magnitude r squared along the, uh, the, 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 what do you call it, the diagonal. Okay, so when you apply the square root to this, it's basically taking the square root of all those magnitudes on the diagonal. So, when, so therefore, what I'm trying to say is square root operator and a vector multiplied by itself are not inverse operators. Okay, this here is a misnomer. When we take the square of a vector, we take a vector times itself, which is equivalent to the dot product, the vortex dot product of the vector, which forms a matrix. And then so when we take the square root of that dot product, because the dot product loses information, we cannot get back to a vector. We remain as a scalar, and that's very important for this. So in the end, because this is a scalar, it's going to remain as a scalar. This, this notation here, okay, is really means r, r dot r, which forms a matrix, and the square root operator can only apply to a matrix and can only return a matrix or a scalar. In vortex algebra, your scalars are scalar matrices. So basically what I'm going to say is this must remain a scalar, which is a matrix in vortex algebra. And that is one of the other landmines I'll explain later as we go down. But because this is all in scalar world, we're going to use standard derivative um, notation. We're not going to have to do a vortex derivative. We'll do a vortex derivative a little later. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to say what we're looking for then is the derivative with respect to time of the square root of r squared. Okay, and that we're going to use form number nine from the book. I forgot the third edition of the Chemical Rubber Company Bible. Um, and this works out when we take the derivative of this. It ends up being one over 2 times the square root of r squared times the derivative of u dt, where u is equal to r squared. Okay, so now we've got to take the derivative of r squared. Now because r is not a variable, it's, it's actually a, 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 um, it's, it's a function of, of variables. It's not a lone variable then we have to use the general form of the derivative of u for, to complete this part. So du dt is equal to 2r, the derivative of this, times the derivative of the contents of r, times the derivative of r itself. Okay, now I'm going to plug this back into this, and we have 1 over 2r squared, square root, times 2r times derivative of r. And this cancels here. And what did I screw up here? Oh, never mind. I'm good. So this lets r over r squared, which is the magnitude of r times the derivative, oops, derivative of r. This can all be replaced. This here is the direction vector of r. That's another thing I forgot to put up here, that the direction vector of r is defined as r divided by the magnitude of r. And so therefore, um, we have r over the magnitude of r times the derivative of r, so this is equal to r direction vector times r dot. Now, because this can only ever be a scalar, it can never be anything other than a scalar, the only thing that can exist in here is the dot product. Because the dot product will lead to a scalar. Right? If we put it can't be the cross product, it can only be the dot product. Okay, and therefore, we can replace this, say that r dot velocity of the target minus the velocity of the source. 
dot product. Okay, and so this is, these are the three forms of this. And those are the forms we're going to use in the next derivation. Okay, and whenever we use these, because these are vectors, these all form matrices, so we're going to enclose them in brackets. And when we're going to put a limitation on these, that these, because what we're looking for is a scalar, and these are scalars, that these must be kept together. In other words, we can't factor this guy out of these brackets. This has to be evaluated by itself before you do anything else. That was one of the other landmines that I've been stepping on time and time again. And finally, when I had this realization that this must be kept together, that solved all the problems. Well, enough of the problems. Okay, that's it for this video.